80% of smartphone users are carrying around a product dominated by one company's agenda. That's a quote from Yola co-founder Mark Dillon, and it's those kind of broadsides that have drawn privacy lovers from all around the world to the Yola brand. Today, those sailors get a close peek at the next device to carry the Yola name. I'm Michael Fisher with Pocket Now here in Barcelona with a quick look at the new Yola tablet. While technically the star of today's press conference was the Yola tablet itself, really the bigger focus was put on Sailfish, the company's open source operating system. Many of its core interface principles remain unchanged from the Yola phone we reviewed over a year ago. Software buttons have largely been eliminated in favor of swipe gestures. The home screen is a blank canvas for active app cards, and there's a focus on clean, minimalistic design. With the upgrade to version 2.0, Sailfish looks and feels better than ever, and it seems especially at home blown up to the nearly 8-inch screen size of the tablet. But the real news here is that Sailfish is now open for licensing to OEMs and Yola's business partners, meaning it has a chance of seeing wider adoption and greater penetration. And a wider customer base is exactly what Yola needs if its dream of becoming the private and secure alternative to Android is to come true. Speaking of Android, let's get back to the hardware. The Yola tablet can run Android apps natively within Sailfish 2.0. As Dylan puts it, it ships with zero Android in the box, but you can have Android apps if you do want them. Further, Yola claims the performance and responsiveness of these apps won't suffer, despite running on a non-Google device. And it also promises a slicker multitasking experience as a result of Sailfish's card-based design. Part of that workload will fall to the 64-bit Intel Atom processor and its 2 gigs of RAM, and users will be able to choose between 32 gigs of onboard storage or up to 128 gigs of micro SD expansion for their onboard media. In the hand, the tablet feels sleek and lightweight. It's just a bit larger and heavier than the iPad Mini 2, and its style is minimalist without being dull. The 7.85-inch IPS display kicks out a pixel density of 330 ppi, and the onboard radio provides support for Wi-Fi ABGNN on both primary bands. No AC support as of yet, and no cellular either. Whether this tablet holds up as a commercial product remains to be seen. It won't ship until the second quarter. But the pricing of the world's first crowdsourced tablet is certainly attractive. Early contributors to the company's Indiegogo campaign were able to get in for less than 200 bucks, and the tablet's final retail price is expected to fall around the $249 mark. But even those prices won't convince everyone to consider a tablet that falls so far outside the mainstream, even if it was designed specifically to do so. It's easy to get behind Yola's promises that it will never sell user data, especially in the modern era of rampant data aggregation in the name of profit. But in the end, before anything else, the Yola tablet will have to be a solid tablet if its creator wants it to move in significant numbers. And we'll see just how good a product it is when we review it in the coming months. Be sure to check out our 2013 video on the Yola smartphone in the early days of Sailfish, and also see our full news coverage from the biggest show in mobile at pocketnow.com. Till next time, I'm Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Twitter, with Anton Dinoj and Jaime Rivera on production. Stay tuned for much more from Barcelona as MWC 2015 rolls on.